Welcome to the Animation Industry Podcast. My name is Terry, and I always put hot chocolate mix in my coffee. This chat is with short filmmaker Alexandra Ramirez, who shares her insights into short film storytelling as through her Oscar contending short film, Ty, which is about a female soul and a male soul who learn not to hide their unique qualities by coming together. In our chat, Alexandra is gonna share how she makes each moment impactful, how she received funding to make the film, the collective of directors called BAP that collaborated to complete the animation, and the process of physically hand drawing and using TV paint to create each individual frame. And speaking of TV paint, this episode is actually sponsored by my friends over at the massively popular animation platform, TV Paint. Created in 1991 by Werve Adam, TV Paint was developed to create digital 2D animations as closely as possible to hand-drawn animation and make it accessible to everyone. Now used by artists, animation schools, and major film studios all over the world, including Cartoon Saloon, who used it to create their feature film Wolf Walkers, TV Paint has many powerful tools that can imitate real-life painting and drawing techniques like gouache, watercolor, pencil, and more. So if you'd like to try TV Paint for yourself, head on over to tvpaint.com to begin your free trial now. Now, without further ado, let's just jump into the chat. Hi, Alexandra. How are you doing? Hi, Terry. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I'm really excited to chat. Um, so your film, uh, Ty, or in brackets, Elo, I, I gave it a watch and it's absolutely beautiful. And I want you to tell me uh, what it's all about, what's what's going on with it. And I, I'm... Also, my biggest question, sorry, I guess, is did you did you draw it all in chalk? Uh, no, this is like a, a normal pencil. Okay. And graphite powder. It's a powder. And I do it like uh, in black, but afterwards I inverted digitally, you know? Oh, I wow. photographed the drawings. So I need to think in in opposite, in negative. Uh, okay. So it's it's a good exercise for the eyes and the, for the mind to try to invert everything because uh, if suddenly I start to draw the teeth and I don't paint it in black when I invert the teeth will be black you know so I need, yeah. it's like printmaking some types of printmaking you have to invert the colors to make the image have some sense. What was the what was the choice to do it um, hand drawn instead of digitally? Because you know there's programs like that you can mimic real life, I guess. So why did you choose to do it in in the graphite? Uh, actually, the previous film that I did I did with a friend. It's a it's a co-directed film which calls Agua Mall. That one uh, we painted digitally, but in this one I tried. But the time that I spent to try to get the same texture and the same vibrance and the, the same t types of lines, uh, I didn't got uh, any results that pleased me, <laughs> me and my team. Uh, and so I decided to do by hand because in the previous film, it was kind of funny because it was uh, uh, um, based on a printmaking technique which called dry point. And I wanted, oh, I want to make the, the, that look of dry point because it helps to feel the texture that we want to the to the film. And we spent months to get a brush that uh, really replies the the kind of a stroke of the dry point technique, and we got it. But suddenly we thought, okay, let's try to do it in really a printmaking. Uh, work like uh, frame by frame we print each frame and just 40 seconds of the film and we spend the same time <laughs> so at the end um we we felt that that the to use sometimes the digital it helps and it improves and make it faster but depends on not what you want. And uh, in this case, we we felt that uh, really worse to do it on paper. Actually, the animation was digitally, like frame by frame on TV paint. But afterwards, we print each frame and we do it like with pencils on paper. Ah, ah. so you use TV paint as uh, to animate it all. And then you printed it and then colored it in. Oh, wow. that That's... 
I mean, for me, just hearing that process sounds insane, but watching the film, it definitely paid <laughs> off. It's got a it's got a very beautiful look and feel that feels very unique to, to other things as well. Because those types of fingerprints and the, I don't know if you feel that it makes like a kind of a glow around the lines and yeah. the, uh, you can have that digitally, but in my point of view, I can feel that it's different and I, I don't get into so much the, the drawing uh, when it's real and when it's digital. In some films make sense, but in this one, I, uh, I really want to make it by hand. <laughs> so tell me, tell me a little bit about the film, uh, the, the, the kind of the message that you were portraying, maybe what's about a little bit without giving away too much. And maybe who, who did you make it for as well? Um, that's, that's three questions. Okay, let's start with <laughs> what's the film? Try, tell me about the film. What's the film about? Uh, well, something that I really like in, in this film, um, that it happens a lot more than the other films that I work or what, that I directed before, uh, it's the, that the theme is not obvious. And it's, uh, it's a, a kind of a game that I like to play with the audience because each person that see the film uh, projects themselves or their, their way of seeing the world on the film, so it's really beautiful uh, when people see the film. Uh, when people get to me and say, "Oh, so uh, nice this film about um, uh, transgender issues," because it, afterwards they become just one with two genders, and it's something that I, it makes me a lot of sense. But in my point of view, it, it wasn't. My intention, my intention, it's how far you should go when you want to adapt to someone or to a, an environment or to a politic system or to uh, nature around. You always need to work and try to match uh, in order to get to an end, I think, to a point of view or, or something. And I, I feel that a lot in my life when I co-direct films, I need to I need to work a lot in the relationships with the team, with the the, the other person that I co-direct, in my family, in my uh, daily life, in uh, my point of view, in a political way, uh, tr try to understand how w the dialogue that it's possible to to make my point of view understandable. And this effort to adapt, I, I think it's a kind of a balance that we are always looking for. And sometimes we need to use masks to, 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 to seem someone that we are not, uh, to make it fit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so this is a kind of things that I'm, it's not quite easy to put in words, but if I have to put in one word, the theme for me, it's about adaptation or three words. <laughs> cooperation and love actually it because it's uh, love is in on everything i think yeah, yeah. more present or less present it's always there and uh and these three things guide my way of seeing the world and uh, even if you think in the transgender theme that some people see this film as a transgender uh theme the, the 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 need to adapt is really strong so it's really normal that people see that on the film so yeah that's it the film is about adaptation <laughs> uh, so to say did yeah. you start off with this idea of adaptation and cooperative cooperation and love and then build the film around that or did you already have the story in mind because one big question i have that relates to what i'm I guess I need to explain myself a little bit, but um, so, you know, I'm in animation school. I learn a lot about animation storytelling and the traditional way is, you know, the hero's journey, act one, two, three, the golden chalice, the mentor, et cetera. But your film, it's much more of a metaphorical story and it's 11 minutes long and it's engaging the whole way through, but there's none of that traditional storytelling, as, mm -hmm. at least as far as I can tell, infused in it, but you're still telling a very beautiful story that follows a narrative. So how how did you build out this narrative? Did you start with I want to I want to do something with adaptation 
and then follow a formula or did, did it just play out in your mind as you, I guess I'm being kind of vague, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, it's it's really nice to to hear that and and make me think about that because sometimes it's not so conscious. But for example, I, I never I never learned storytelling. My mm. graduation, it's not in uh, animation or in cinema or in uh, storytelling or in script. I, I don't um, have those bases. Uh, my graduation is in painting <laughs> and then in painting i think sometimes people try to condense a lot of information or a lot of forms of expression in one image uh, and i think it started more through one image and afterwards i started to fold it up and understand how can i make everything to get to this image hmm. and the image itself it was the girl on the piggybacks of, of the guy <laughs> yeah. um piggybacks is yeah 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 piggybacking yeah okay. um because i was reading a book and the idea of adaptation and all of that is always present in 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 my way of seeing the world so it's it's always there and i was reading uh, a book that uh, they were talking about uh, a, a, a people a group of people that they have a really small head and the really big bodies and they use masks to cover their head and they were really dummy and they hide their dumbiness <laughs> with the masks. Uh, and I kind of like how bizarre th this character was. Um, but some uh, some parts of the things that, of the description of this character, I didn't uh, uh, like. For example, the thing of, okay, people with a small head, it's dummy people, or for example, you know, when people say, oh, I see that guy wasn't a good guy because he, their eyes were really small. <laughs> when you try to make it fit like physical issues with uh, psychological issues. So uh, I try, okay, I will build my own character and let me try to sing this character in my own way. And I try to draw the character, and then I start to make uh, something that adapts to him, uh, and I create her, the the character, the girl character, and I started that the both images, and then I start to <laughs> to create more images uh, and and uh, put a lot of references about the things that I was reading at the time that I studied that I, I, I can really explain each detail where I where did I took it from but I think it's a, a so long, you, it would be a long conversation yeah. so you started with a very strong ending and then figured out the rest to get there I, I guess the one more question I have about kind of your narrative is you know it's 11 minute long film and sometimes we're just looking at a picture of a dog uh, what's animated obviously or a bird in the sky and for me like I have a hard time making 20 seconds engaging but like I was engaged the entire way through no matter what you were showing me so how what is what do you do to make sure that every moment stands out and is engaging um, instead of you know when you watch something and you feel like why is this scene here or is this boring like I didn't get any of that in your film so how do you make what are your tricks to make things engaging throughout? Well, good question, because I don't know, how to <laughs> okay. think, but I will, I will find a way. I think one of the things that I took some advantage is like the image itself, it's not the usual one. It's not that digital drawing with the plain colors. Uh, you can stand in front of a drawing or a painting in a museum uh, for 20 seconds uh, and if you add movement to the painting for example if it's a, a small painting that it's moving I think you can stand 20 seconds and it's not so hard so I tried to make the the things as a, a those kind of the, those shots uh, make it fit on the narrative but also uh, have some space to be contemplative uh, they are not telling anything about the story itself but the, it plays more with symbols and you have time to look to that uh, and and try to to 
how can I say, enjoy the technique and the drawing itself and the, uh, rather do, than have to, to say always everything in each shot. We don't need, I think some, because it makes you feel, it puts you on in a mood. If you see the birds uh, flying like in a eight shape, uh, you can get you can get a bit hypnotized, and then you are more prepared to the next shot. That it's uh, it's more surprising, you know. So I think this kind of games, I had a lot of time to think about it because we took uh, one year and a half to do it uh, in the eleven minutes. So I was always playing with uh, the order of the shots and trying to understand how much time we can spend here rather than here and uh, and that's it <laughs> refinement so you you also said you are not a traditionally trained animator um and then you've made animation films and you're part of a collective now uh how did you study animation or was it just on your own did you did you do it uh you know through schools or or classes or whatnot Actually, I, I, I study painting, as I told you, mm -hmm. and there was a, some, uh, how can I say, some classes that I took at the same time about animation, hand-drawn animation and uh, stop-motion animation. And I was taking it at the same time, but uh, really simple, really technical. No one uh, said to me that, OK, now you have to make a film after that. It was just more technical things. And uh, I started to work in a, a company, uh, uh, animation studios, that the, the, the teacher of one of these courses um, was the owner of one uh, animation company. And I started there, but I, I think in the place that I learn more is working with other people. When I talking about uh, the studio, that it's our cooperative, that we are a group of directors that work in each other's films, the possibility to work in such a different, um, how can I say, aesthetics and uh, ways of viewing animation, of understanding animation, I think it makes me grow a, a lot and and to one it, it wants me to make my own way of animation uh, of seeing animation nice. but technically I, I i learned a lot with uh, my colleagues friends uh, this group bop, bop animation people <laughs> gotcha. so but, so oh so you're working in an animation studio and uh, as many people are and you have an idea for a film, you know, this is your second film, obviously, we have an idea for this film. What, how do you pitch this idea? It's an 11 minute film that you're doing in a very unique style, telling a very unique story. How do you pitch this idea to get trust from other people, um, however you got it funded, to give you money, to give you the time, to give you the resources and the team to create a film like this? Um, yeah, actually, we, we are a small group of people, uh, at least until now, <laughs> and uh, and we have uh, some uh, fundings for animation. And is this the studio that your um, teacher owns, or is this the collective? Oh no, this is a collective. Okay. The collective that the that one was a long time ago. Gotcha. And, yeah, after that. We started the collective in a different city. It's uh, it's not related to that first place. Um, I forgot. So what you I was... started a collective, and then you pitched you pitched this ah, idea to, to the collective, sure. and they said, "Sure, let's do this." And then, and then it happens. I guess <laughs> money yeah, comes it, in somehow. People yeah. say, "Sure, <laughs> you hire people." <laughs> uh, well, I, I I went to do this studio like the, the collective uh, studio mm -hmm. uh, and I started to work to other people's films and then mm, I, uh, me and Laura a friend of mine we propose a project together and we apply to the fundings because we have uh, fundings to, to make uh, short films in, in Portugal in Europe in, in uh, several countries you have that uh, and to apply to that, you need uh, some things like a script, 
uh, one minute of the storyboard, the visuals, the intentions of the director, uh, your needs. And then you have a, a jury uh, that uh, see, okay, we have this amount of money and we will give to this project, this project and this project. Uh, and we have the help to each other to build this uh, presentation. Mm. Uh, and then we, me and Laura, my friend, we did the, that first film, Agumol. And after that, people start to know our work and uh, uh, I have this idea that I want to direct uh, just myself because I think it's more a personal film. Um, and, uh, and that's it. We wrote uh, a script, a complete script for 11 seconds. It was uh, almost everything there on the script. And uh, I show the visuals that you see on the film. It's pretty much similar in this case. Sometimes you show an idea and when you make it, it's really different. But in the ca in the case of Eldu, the things were uh, were almost the same in the, the beginning until the end. The the the, the visuals nice. and the scripts. So it, it was a strong idea built from the start. And I love that you have kind of this collective to get feedback and work together. But I'm also wondering, you know, the the governing body who gives out the funding from the Portugal government, they must be getting tons of applications from different filmmakers. What do you think um, made your application stand out? When you were creating it, were you saying to yourself like this, this unique thing I'm putting in is going to get funding? Like how confident did you feel? And what do you think the unique thing was that made it stand out versus other films? Well, the things that I think it makes is, uh, it's, it's because it's, authentic it, well it's it's it seems like a self compliment <laughs> which is really strange but uh i wasn't trying to please anyone you know and okay. when when you are what well at least me when i was in the university in my in the college and all of that you are always wanting to please to the the teachers your colleagues the industry the work and it's when you finish the college, it's the college and the university. It's it's uh, for me. It was really really hard to to start to think. Okay, now who I who I need to please. <laughs> uh. Uh, and I think and 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 I work always to try to get away to that idea that I need to please someone. And I was really confident in, in this project because I, I felt that it, in the first time I, I felt that I, I, this is my vision. If the jury doesn't like, it's just me, they don't need to like me. <laughs> uh, and, the, and, and that's it. So it was the, the, the only reason it, that it makes me put some, uh, all of this energy is well i think it's because it was a a, a a true project i don't know i don't know how to explain this <laughs> no, i like that a lot it's you you were digging inside of yourself to create a create something that you saw a vision for and you weren't trying to say uh what do what do the jury want to see what's done well in the past etc that makes a lot of sense what happened what do you think would have happened if the juries uh, rejected your application would you still have made the film well, um, I would make a, a book. Hmm. <laughs> because, a book? Yeah, because I, I, I built a story based on images. And yeah. This film is about that. It was, um, and, and the, well, the only thing is a film, it's really, really expensive. And this would just, would just be possible with, uh, with money. Otherwise, I, I would I would need to get a, a rich husband to pay me everything <laughs> for ten years, and I would do it alone. If you're listening but, to this podcast and you're rich and single, <laughs> <come back. Yeah. laughs> so she can make more films. <laughs> so, so well, yeah, that's uh, I think that's really interesting that you had such a strong idea that you were going to make something of it, anyways in uh, a different medium that's that's amazing instead of kind of shelving it and and putting it away no, yeah the, because uh it won't it wouldn't be a film like it is it would be other thing 
Yeah. But this was something that I want to do. It's my the drawings that I want to do, the vision that I want to, to tell. I, I don't know. And if they don't like, because there is that, obviously, when you apply, you always know that people might not like your stuff. A lot of people don't like yeah. this film. <laughs> well, congratulations on getting the funding and, and the film produced and getting in festivals and everything now. That's amazing. So let me ask you, what is what is success for you with, with what this idea has become? Because you said you're going to produce it regardless in a medium that can make sense. So what, what is a measure of success for you? Uh, to with, with the film or with the idea that you, you made the film into? Well, my idea of success is, um, is being happy with what I've done. <laughs> and uh, to feel that, uh, um, how can I say, <laughs> to feel that uh, the work that I'm doing pleased me and the ones that are, that are doing it with me. <laughs> uh, this is, if, if, if this happens, I'm really happy. And it's okay if it has to be a book, it's a book, it has to be, it can be a film because it was thought to be a film. It's okay. I, I'm not sure if this was your. No, it's 100% what I was asking. And I, I love that answer. You know, success is different for different people. Some people, when they make a film, they make it for a specific audience. And if it connects with that audience, that's success for them. And some people, you know, they want to win awards and things like that. And, and uh, for you, it, at least what I what I interpreted is that you wanted to be proud of what you were creating and to have the people who are creating it enjoy the process just as much as you are and that success and honestly that that that's amazing I love that a lot yeah because sometimes people say to me okay but you, you would uh, earn more money if you do it in, the, uh, in a different way you can do it cheaper and mm -hmm. you can get more money for you and this is kind of things that you can uh, easily listen from the others but if i want to be rich i won't be an animator uh, <laughs> yeah, right. for sure <laughs> uh, so i'm i'm really happy to to be able to to make films it's it's an in, an incredible journey a collective journey uh, in my right. point of view because not for everyone uh, that i i like to do it uh, with more people and this is life, <laughs> relation with people doing what we want. I never be rich. I never have. will have a big house and a big car and a, a big bank account. But uh, I will have uh, things that I'm proud, uh, artworks, at least yeah. I hope so. <laughs> well, I think that's I think that's incredible. And, and you're right. A lot of people try to push those ideas into art a lot of, you know, the business side and making more money. And, and maybe if you chose to do those things, you wouldn't be as happy with and proud of the results otherwise. So I think that's, it sounds to me like that's, that's perfect. <laughs> so um, now that this film is, is done and it's, you know, it's getting some attention, which I think is great. Hopefully I can bring a little bit of attention to it as well. Um, I very much enjoyed it. What are you, are you full-time at the collective now? Or are you going back to animation? Like what is your, what is, what are next steps for you? Well, uh, now I'm working on other directors' film, as I told you before, in a collective, in our collective, uh, we work like that. But I also have some projects in mind. One of them already got funding, which oh, wow. is the documentary, uh, because the previous one was a documentary, Eldo is a fiction. And the next one will be a documentary as well. And uh, when I work in documentary, I work with my friend, Laura Gonçalves. Uh, and um, so the next film will be with her. And I have some projects that I need to get more funding as well. but. In this group, we also are producers by, our, by ourselves. And uh, so I'm also to trying to produce uh, the possibility to, to, to make uh, uh, more types of work. I would like to make a series and I will try to understand if it's something that it really makes sense to me. So I need to develop a bit more. And uh, is what I'm saying, I'm working in a painting some um, a part of a film of uh, the director of the studio 
and uh, after that I will direct again, but with Laura. Yeah. Wow. You have many, so many hats, but I guess that's what it's like working in a cooperative, which I also think is is really cool that you you work in such an environment and get to work on so many different projects and. I think it's, it's nice hats. because you work in the several areas of the production of the film, and when mm. you when we, you direct, you all had already can have a, a, a more a zoom out, <laughs> you know, and you can understand. Okay, I understand what uh, the painting team is is uh, is into now with this film because I've I've been on that place too, and okay, I understand the producer because sometimes I also I'm also a producer. I understand the director when I'm a team because sometimes I also a director. So uh, it's a good training to understand it, all the people <laughs> if we work in the different stages of the production. Nice, nice. I, I think that's really cool. Is there, as we're, as we're kind of wrapping up here, is there anything else you wanted to share about your experience or your journey or advice for others who are looking to produce short films themselves? Well, I'm, I just have to say that I'm really happy to show these types of films uh, and be able to do it in a in the other side of the ocean, you know, because it's it's a completely different type of audience, and uh, and to feel that the, f the film can do that journey that I'm not able to do it now for obvious reason, <laughs> it pleased me a lot to feel that to under to to feel that people see the film on that side of the world <laughs> yeah that's really cool and that's kind of the beauty of animation is especially with yours because there's no there's no language in it it's just yeah. it's just visuals and uh sound so that's kind of the beauty of animation you connect with so many people around the world in a way that you might not be able to otherwise well yeah. thank you so much alexandra for coming on it's been a lovely chat to hear all about how you made uh elo or thai and uh thanks for sharing your journey and your advice and all the cool stuff in between yeah, and thank you, Terry, for your lovely guidelines and questions and all of that. I really appreciate it. It was really nice. <laughs> oh, nice. That's that's good to hear. And you're welcome. And thank you. And if you're listening and you want to follow Alexandra's work or uh, get in touch with her or follow the film, I will include links to do so in the description of this chat. And that is all for now. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, bye. <laughs>